you are uh, very long term and I must say very one of our most loyal partners of the company, I have to say. Uh, you're a friend and client of iSquare, you have a background in marketing research and neuroergonomic marketing management. And uh, you have been assistant professor and research associate at Leibniz University, Hannover. That's also where we started cooperation with, yes. with Philipp Reiter, our CEO, who's the main contact of, of, of Steffen. And yeah, since almost six years, you are with Link Marketing Services. And we are collaborating with you since a long time with a lot of projects with uh, the university. And we also are working with you with um, providing you with implicit and behavioral tools. And uh, welcome today with your talk um, about Brand Meets Wallet, the art of pricing through AI-based branding. Very interesting. <laughs> Thank you very much, Karina, for the nice introduction. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining this great Memex conference. So it's the first time I'm on stage at the Memex. So uh, the first uh, couple of times I've never been attending it because it was a time uh, during uh, my university career where I was uh, on vacation and after that I was quite often on diving trips but since four years I think I'm attending also the Memex and I really love uh, the atmosphere here, the energy uh, today, uh, the great speeches and yeah, I'm really honored to talk to, to, uh, today about Brands Meet Wallet, uh, the art of pricing through AI based branding, which is more or less, I would say at least 50% uh, also um, um, a topic which oh, I only can talk about due to uh, the great support by iSquare since more than 10 years. So yeah, um, quick word to Link Institute, maybe you heard about us, if not, um, now you heard something about. Uh, we are the largest uh, agency for marketing research uh, in Switzerland, which is not that difficult. Switzerland is a small country, but anyway, we have all the big clients uh, from all industry, B2B, B2C. And since uh, close to two years, we have been acquired by YouGov, and YouGov is the most cited research agency in the world. Um, could you, or can you remember this picture? It's from last October, and when it came out, so many people reached me out and said, Stefan, see how stupid AI is. I said, oh, come on, guys. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about the prompt. Um, I'm not sure, but anyway, even though it's I feel fine with that. I'm pretty sure it doesn't take that much time uh, and we will improve a lot, right? And we improved a lot. Uh, this, is yet, this is now the artificial trend by Google uh, Scholar. We can see here the, depends on how you would call it. We, is it the second winter, the third or the fourth? For me, it's the fourth winter, which started more or less uh, at the end or the beginning of the 2000 years. Uh, I would claim it uh, due to, to Frank. Frank was uh, doing his um, uh, PhD there during this time about artificial intelligence, and that was a drop down, <laughs> more or less, uh, but not due to him. Um, and we could see here, uh, yeah, a decrease around 2015, 2016, another one, November 22, uh, 2022. Why? Because uh, ChatGPT came out. That changed everything. So, and yes, as I said, uh, we worked a lot or since a long time with, uh, with iSquare, and this is a couple of papers from 2015, 2016, when big data and deep learning came out, where we already used artificial intelligence to improve marketing, marketing with regard to branding, but also with regard to product development, which I wrote together with, uh, for example, with, uh, with Michael, with Philip, uh, with Matthias, and many other colleagues from, uh, from iSquare. So now ChatGPT is everywhere. So at least, I mean, I open my LinkedIn profile, I can see it everywhere, I can see this kind of uh, sheets and somehow I'm a little, little bit, yeah, I'm, I'm happy on the one side because now it's a breakthrough. On the other side, come on guys, there's a little too much chit chat about and we have to more, uh, let's say, productive with that. And when we take a close look at the Garden Hype Cycle, which came out a couple of days ago, now we can see that regenerative AI everybody's talking about, like ChatGPT, uh, is on the peak. What can we expect now? A drop. And maybe I skip back to the, oops, sorry, my fault. Let's get back to the trend uh, radar. We can already see some kind of uh, uh, down, right? So, and probably or my argument would be because now people use it and say, nothing changed at all. Maybe I'm a little bit quicker, but not better. Let's say it this way. And today I would like to show you 
how we can avoid this down and go to the plateau of priority wall rating because we can do that in a couple of years. And uh, today I will show you how we can manage it. So what we do we need? Uh, first of all, I will show something about implicit pricing power, but only shortly because uh, this evening at, how do you call it, pitch night? Yeah. Um, Frank will talk about that and about the implicit price intelligence approach, which is uh, the basis is the implicit pricing power approach I developed. Then uh, I will go on with the implicit brand power approach. Then I'm going to show how brand power has an e impact on pricing power. Um, and then later I will see or will demonstrate how we can use now a human AI combination to improve on the one side the brand power and on the other side the pricing power. So let's start with the pricing power. This was my first uh, project. Um, this is an online shop for gifts in, uh, from Germany. A good friend of mine, he's the owner and founder of that. And he, he reached me out and said, Chef, see this kind of product. They are not really selling, so it's, he doesn't know why. I said, hey, come on, um, yeah, we check it. And uh, I just, in this time, I focus on, uh, on pricing because I think there's a pricing problem here. And we can see the re recommend retail price was 24.95. He was selling it for 39.95. And the other product, product within nine years, was the uh, recommend retail price 29.95. And he was selling it for 49.95. So we run the study. Can we move on? Here, can see already my next slides. So there's some kind of disconnection. Ah, here we go. So um, this is an analysis for the nine beer packs. So with a classical approach, like the price sensitive meter, I think, I guess everybody knows about that. I, I, let's find out it must be the recommend retail price of uh, 24.95. And with our implicit price meter approach, we figured out now nah, it's, it's the optimal price point to have the highest profit would be 39.95. So we changed it to this, uh, to this price points, and at the end, we could, we could see that within one, uh, within two weeks, it was the best selling products on this website, on this online shop. Pretty cool. We ran a couple of other studies, and why it was working is, now the demonstration, we used artificial intelligence. That's the whole trick. And the whole trick is here that we could identify non-linearities as well as an action effect with regular uh, techniques like uh, multiple linear regression, no chance. And at the end, we have been around 80, an 81% uh, of times correct to predict will it improve the profit or not. Here's another example, two products. On the uh, left side, you can see a Beamer. On the right side, you can see a perfume set, again, as a gift. And we predicted here with regard to the Beamer, you should increase the price from 100 139.95 up to 109.95, uh, so it's a big increase. We predicted the conversion rate will uh, change by approximately, approximately minus 24 percent. At the end, it was minus 30, uh, 33 percent, but still, it, the change in profit has been positive, right? So plus seven, uh, almost 18 percent uh, positive. But it's not always about increasing price. Sometimes you also have to decrease the price. And that we could see at the perfume set, we said, um, we estimated if you go down from uh, around 50 euro down to 40 euro, uh, the profit will, or the change profit will be around 26%. Uh, at the end, it was plus 8.5. But anyway, it was a positive change. So great approach. But this evening, you will talk a little bit more about that. <clears throat> so maybe a first summary optimize uh, revenue and profit with AI-driven implicit brand power. So let's go on with brand power, um, because it's my main topic. I'm a brand guy, I'm a marketing guy, less a pricing guy. And one of my favorite books I recommend most of the time is, uh, I see a negative reaction, I see something blue <laughs> in the front. <laughs> but anyway, it's accepted and I can deal with that because it's about mental availability, somehow. We can do, discuss the definition about, but yeah, it's somehow, about the mental availability. And here in particular, when it comes to advertising, getting noticed, that would be system one, according to Michael, or according to I-square. Um, emotional rep response, I would change the word emotional response to implicit res response, but on top, also relevant association, or any kind of association, relevant, which resonates somehow 
with consumer mind. So this is, this is an example for that. This is Geza. If you have been attended the Maymax two years ago, she was on stage and shared this slide as well. I think it's a nice illustration how it works. We can either frame it this kind of nice meat. Would you like to go to the taste door, focusing on taste, or on uh, health? So, and if you go uh, for taste, you have to frame it as 10% fat, because fat is a, uh, increases taste. Or if you would like to approach to the target group of more health-oriented people, then please frame it to 90% fat-free, which at the end is the same, right, from, from a mathematical perspective. But anyhow, people react differently, because it's a it's different kind of relevance for them. That's the whole trick. So we need to find the right door. And we are using, again, um, don't be irritated about this nice uh, structural equation modeling. It's more about that when we analyze, or when once we found a model link, it's again about causal AI or artificial intelligence, because we have so many nonlinearities inside. And quite often, like something like that, we can see you need to not, not to be uh, at quite the highest brand motivation when it comes to that uh, um, uh, construct. It's enough that you are good, because then you have a plateau. And that's quite nice if you approach, have approaches like that, that you can optimize what kind of association you should trigger at which level. Um, how we do that at the end, um, use um, implicit performance data, like, sorry guys, you missed my slides, or something. NDA launcher, perfect, thank you much. Uh, we use implicit performance data, most of the time it's reaction time measurement, because we can run it online, and also we can, we can um, nicely uh, measure the associations, but it can also be facial coding, EG data, whatever it is at the end. And a couple of explicit performance data as well. We put it into the machine, the causal eye machine, and at the end, what I create for our clients is a so-called salient association score, where I combine the performance, so that's the activation, uh, multiplied by the importance with regard to the brand, um, the positive brand decision making. And here's an example. On the left side, you can see the spider map. And this is a ch some kind of chocolate brands from uh, Switzerland. And yeah, most people like this kind of spider map. I'm not a fan of descriptive statistics at all because uh, usually people would say, oh, let's, for example, a fray uh, has a nice peak on hero. We must be better on hero. But you don't know. You have to fig figure out what kind of archetypes are activated in terms of what are relevant with regard to the brand and the decision making of the uh, consumers. And here we see with regard to Lint, it's the explorer, for example, the hero, the jester, and the everyman. Those are relevant. All the others you can ignore. You can improve there, but you will see almost no impact at all. But focus on this one, and that's, this is a tricky part, right? If you don't like archetypes, I heard a lot of discussion as well about that. Use other modeling. I like it because, like working with companies we, uh, like Kochstraße, Geza Lischka's company, or other agencies, um, they are used to do that kind of model, uh, archetype modeling, and uh, that help me, helps me when I create insights for them that I have a higher acceptance at the end. So and the good thing about that now is, um, again, a lot of numbers, sorry for that, you only need to focus on the table on the right side. There you can see this sign association score for each brand we calculated with causal AI, based again on the performance multiplied by the importance, one single score, and this single score, that single score, we can predict uh, KPIs like penetration. So there's a high relevance. It means at the end, when, for example, over Martina will increase, there are, now there are around 13, how many points they have? 12.8, yeah, 13 points. Uh, they, they're going to improve um, from 13 to 15. We can expect an increase in penetration as well, and I will demonstrate it, it later again. So um, another example that is this kind of uh, methodology is uh, successful. Uh, one of our clients, Credit Suisse, unfortunately now acquired by UBS, and we'll see how long the name Credit Suisse will stand. Um, we support them with regard to their CSX campaign, and we use signal association tests, we use Causey AI, and we get really nice fig uh, figures, uh, performance figures like uh, ad recall was above 20 percent above target, but more importantly, image value has been increased. 20% as well above target, and the most important uh, uh, KPI was new, or is new client growth increased by approximately 40%. Great. 
And that I can I see quite often when it comes to this kind of approach and the business performance. So uh, another summary, optimized return on brand investment with AI-driven implicit brand power. Um, when it comes to the impact of brand power on pricing power, and this is, was more or less uh, triggered last year by Stefan Schöner. Where is Stefan? Somewhere in the audit. There he is. He was here asking, uh, or told me, uh, Stefan, the implicit pricing intelligence by Frank, I understood that, but we are working most of the time with advertisement checks. Can you help figure out if there is some kind of relation between uh, advertisement effect on brand power and then pricing power? That's, uh, it takes some time because uh, I don't have a, anything in my, in my mind now, but let's see what I can do. And uh, I was remembering this kind of nice study by Knudsen et al. from 2007, where he figured out the higher the brand power, the higher the reward activation in a simple way. And this uh, is somehow recalculated uh, with regard to the insula activation, that means the pain activation when, when people perceive the price. If you uh, pay something, you lose something, that's negatively. So that is an, uh, the theoretical and um, empirical framework for that. And I calculated now what kind of impact does have the silent association score with regard to the spontaneous buyer impulse, so the price sensitive meter. And here we can see really nice, again, non-linearities. That means at the end, uh, when we could take a look at the middle, it's quite difficult for a brand to increase the price thing. But if a really good, a premium brand, which many, many people love, then we can see at the end a peak. And other way around, if you're a brand which is not really a brand, weak brand, you go down. You have to decrease the price. Uh, so it's uh, the confirmation that it somehow must work. But then I was thinking, okay, that's uh, again just data. Let's do the real stuff. And with regard to the real stuff, I would like to show you now, I call it the human AI combo. So first of all, we need some nice implicit consumer, uh, consumer survey to identify the status quo. Then we need causing AI to identify what kind of key drivers are there. Then we, then we start with generative AI as based on the input from the causal AI. Then we go further with the predictive AI. We see ge content generated by gener uh, generative AI is good or not good enough. And at the end, because human experience we like to test it in a real environment. In this case, we use i squares great in contest testing. So uh, we use data from uh, the smartphone, mobile phone market in Switzerland. It's our free data, so it was not a client uh, study, so we can use uh, the data on our own. And um, what we figured out, when it comes, for example, to um, Samsung, we can see here Samsung, one of the strongest um, items for the Explorer. Um, ruler was negative. Um, um, related to the brand performance, and also we could see some kind of nice interaction uh, effects. So Samsung should focus on Explorer. There are a couple of others as well, but let's say we're going to focus on uh, the Explorer association. Uh, first, I use ChatGPT, and uh, I told ChatGPT, I'm the brand uh, Samsung. I like to promote the new S23 product with regard to the Explorer uh, archetype. Please write a prompt for another AI uh, that, uh, who creates um, a key visual based on that. So I don't need any kind of prompt engineering and just use ChatGPT. Uh, so ChatGPT is going to start. And it, it creates some kind of nice text. For, perfect. Since I'm a lazy, lazy uh, person, I use this kind of uh, prompt without any kind of change. Put it in a machine like Midjourney. Journey can create key visuals or any kind of illustrations at all. Put in, start it, and, and a couple of seconds later, boom, picture. Nice. So um, I used a couple of those. Uh, on top, uh, since I would like to uh, create um, a social media ad, I said, okay, I need, I need some kind of claim. I used NeuroFlash to create a claim. Again, the story was like, I told the test machine what kind of archetype, and the machine is running in a second, and I can create as much as claims as I want. At the end, I decided to use this one. Uh, this, this was the only part where I used my own PowerPoint skills to, to take the key, visual, key visuals and to, uh, to, to place the text. Now, there are also uh, nice AI solutions available which can create text on top with a key visual. I place a logo, and uh, we go to the next step, to the um, 
to a pretty high step and let Shep Frost uh, is a claim activating enough and we can see the claim I choose um, it was sorry the claim I choose was the the freie weiter to gain in, in English uh, the freedom to move on right this was the claim I choose and we see uh, in Neuroflash we can also retest uh, in the machine if the association is activating enough it's performing quite well especially if, when it comes also to be easy understandable it's a quite important indicator if people don't understand it then you have if you're good, you have a zero uh, impact. Uh, if, you're, if you're bad, you have, or if you're not, uh, don't, you don't have that much luck, you have a negative impact. Okay, then we checked the key visual uh, with regard to the performance. We used here another AI, uh, neurons. We uploaded the pictures and figured out does the logo uh, receive enough attention? Does the key visual uh, receive enough attention as well as the claim? All data is fine. Um, so only data where, where I was a little bit skeptical was in the case like focus, too many hotspots, could be critical, but I said, it's just a test. Let's go on with this kind of visuals. On top, I use, again, again another uh, predictive AI, it's called every pixel. You can upload pictures, any kind of pictures. First of all, to check if the picture is good enough. And I would uh, recommend everybody who's got some kind of key version, uploaded it. I'm pretty sure most of the time, the uh, uh, awesome score is below 30 or even close to zero. So and that's another indicator for me. The quality from a machine can be really, really good. On top, I could identify that all these uh, key visuals activate something like outdoors, nature, mountain. So they are related to the archetype of Explorer. Point. Then put it into in-context testing. So we combined um, our Quantilo platform with the in-context platform uh, of iSquare. We invited people to go on Instagram for 30 seconds. This is here now our screen recording, so we can see the ad is placed. We can see this kind of, how, how do you call it, infinite scrolling. Yeah. <laughs> nice term I learned today. And then they go back and we run an implicit association test. And this is the data. Uh, we can see the visibility duration in seconds. Um, the highest visibility duration was with regard to uh, the ad number three, and the lowest one was with regard to ad number two. According to the uh, how do you call it uh, from iSquare, the 2.5 second rule, it should be enough, all right? So it should be enough, so this indicator is okay. Then let's uh, move on. What, what happened with the silent association score? So this was where we focused on this. It should increase to gain more penetration, right? And we can see on the right as a control group, no contact with any kind of ads. It was uh, around 2.6, which is close to the uh, testing we did two years ago, 2.3, so something at all was okay, but they didn't improve. Uh, and we could see, okay, Samsung at number four, 7.7, .7, more or less the same, but in, in, in particular, at number one and three increased a lot, and in, as most increased, we could see with regard to at number two, with 9.4. 9, 9 Let's recalculate it in, in penetration because it's just numbers. Maybe you understand that or not, not, but everybody is understanding this kind of numbers. So now we have a 40% penetration, and we can expect an increase by 7% when, when it comes to penetration if you are use uh, ads like uh, number two. So a seven plus 7% seven improvement. Now on top, because the topic was with pricing, we can see that this increase in, in brand power uh, also has an impact on the uh, price acceptance, right? So the green line is uh, at number two, and it's above, uh, way above uh, the line blue, uh, not in the beginning, but especially in the end, and in the middle. Uh, so here another period can prove, increase the brand power, and you will increase the pricing power, or you can increase the pricing power, right? Okay, um, three takeaways. Um, only human or only you are AI, maybe or, or hopefully I demonstrated it, it's a combination of both, right? So, proper, well, of course, we will use more AI, but we still need human. Yeah? Uh, facts or causality, so facts like just basic descriptive statistics like a spider map. So, no, it's only causality. That's why I'm wearing this shirt, and Frank is wearing this shirt as well. It's about causality. Um, and the last question, or the last, uh, yeah, last question, AI and marketing, revolution or a threat? It's an evolution. We could see it since 20 years, 25 years. 
but now the breaks, right? So it's an evolution and only a threat to uh, marketing or marketing research without AI, right? And last quote I would like to, uh, or I would like to quote, quote lastly, uh, Kellerman, he says, um, yeah, clearly AI is going to win. Um, how people are going to adjust is a fasc fascinating uh, problem. I can see that our, at least our clients in Switzerland react highly positively. So every week I get two or three uh, requests that we run any kind of AI-based study. Thanks for your meaningful attention. Are there any questions? Any questions from the audience? No questions. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, so how do your clients or customers yeah, you're working for react uh, regarding this AI topic? Like how much do they trust in it? You know, like German clients, you, is this validated? Is this, you know, proven? Yeah. How's their um, opinion about this? Well, highly positive. So um, I was, uh, I, I believe it well, I should, because Switzerland is a conservative uh, country, more or less. <laughs> but uh, when people see the success and you can explain it, I think that's a whole trick. And I don't use the term artificial intelligence. When I promote this, I use terms like augmented intelligence, that you increase your own capabilities for better marketing. And then people are using it, mm. usually, usually, of course, with, let's say, a test project, and they figure out, hey, we are now we understand the problem, and then we improved, we get better. So the acceptance is super high. Mm -hmm. And you reveal this, like, right from the beginning of your consultancy, you, yeah. you make... Okay. Quite, quite often use it as a, as a teaser for proposals, ah. just to activate the people. And that's, <laughs> maybe that's, that's a problem. They say, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. no, then they have the problem in the mind. The elephant in the room is now in their mind. And, of course, they would like to remove it or to optimize it. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks. It was very interesting. You will also get a present from us. <laughs> yes, my first one. Thank you.